does the government work for us or do we work for the government? How has the United States changed from a humble, peaceful republic into a police state? Tonight, freedom versus security. This past week, the United States Supreme Court told police that they could break down the door of your home if they smell what they think is smoke from the use of marijuana coming from inside. Last week, the Indiana Supreme Court told police in that state that they can enter a private home even if they're not looking for evidence of a crime. And yesterday, the Justice Department revealed that FBI and local police are executing sneak and peek warrants. They break into your home, seize an item, and don't tell you that they've done this for over 18 months. And they are doing this in ordinary criminal prosecutions, not just for the pursuit of terrorists as the law requires. This is all about the slow loss of personal liberty. Last year, my friend and colleague here at Fox, Glenn Beck, conducted a controversial experiment on air, aided by the use of a rubber frog and a pot of boiling water. Now, don't do this with a real frog because you'll kill it. Glenn demonstrated that if you throw the frog into the water when it's boiling, the frog jumps out. But if you throw the frog into cool water and raise the temperature slowly, the frog will never realize it's being cooked. This doesn't always work, but it's an old metaphor that sheds life on the self-evident truth. Radical change is immediately noticeable, not just when it is radical, but when it is disruptive. But if it happens slowly and in steps, if it happens in degrees, eventually the radical change will have happened and we will not have noticed it at all. America was founded on the belief that our rights come from God and they're inalienable. But in reality, our liberties have been on in the decline from almost the moment of the conception of this great country. The hateful Alien and Sedition Acts, which criminalized free speech that was critical of the government, were enacted in the 18th century by the same generation, indeed in some cases the same people, who adopted the First Amendment with its iconic language that Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. Those laws expired when Jefferson refused to enforce them. But two generations later, another president would argue that he could arrest state officials and newspaper editors with whom he had political differences. And two generations after that, the government enacted the Espionage Act of 1917, which made it a crime to speak out against World War I or to oppose the draft. And two generations after that, FDR arrested Japanese Americans and Italian Americans just because of their nationalities, and the Supreme Court let them get away with it. And two generations after that, the war on drugs was prosecuted to distract us from the disaster in Vietnam and the economic destruction brought about by wage and price controls and the rejection of the gold standard. Each of these assaults on freedom used the previous assault as a legal justification. Then something peculiar happened during the presidency of George W. Bush. In the aftermath of 9-11, the loss of liberty became more direct and more obvious. By the time of President Bush's second term, there was angry and vocal dissent to the loss of personal freedom. By then, federal agents were writing their own search warrants, bypassing judges. The government was monitoring the computer strokes of ordinary folks, not just alleged terrorists. The feds even prosecuted an 80-year-old librarian because she told her 75-year-old assistant that the FBI came calling at the public library where they both worked. One of the dissenters to all of this was a young junior senator from Illinois named Barack Obama. Now, of course, he's the president. President Obama's flip-flop on personal freedom has shown his almost magical transformation from a peaceful civil libertarian into an authoritarian who thinks he can start wars without congressional approval, dispatch police to break down doors of unsympathetic defendants, and wage a war on the wealthy. He's even demanded to know to whom business people have made political contributions before he will let the government do business with them. He wants to tax the most productive in our society, and he's nominated to lifetime federal court judgeships, persons so out of the mainstream of legal thinking that even his fellow Democrats have opposed them. President Obama's post-9-11 world has radically redefined privacy laws, so much so that we allow the government to force us into nude photo booths and touch our children and babies in their most intimate places. Have you ever noticed that the government always claims that when it does these things, it does so in the name of safety? When is the last time you heard the government give as a basis for its behavior personal freedom? Some will say, come on, judge, this is America, we're free. And I would say there are none who are so enslaved as those who falsely believe themselves to be free. Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter warned us about this two generations ago. He said, the loss of liberty rarely comes overnight. It usually comes because of well-intended people and the unintended consequences of their use and abuse of the government 
to interfere in our lives.